Hello, and thank you for joining us this Sunday morning at Evangelist Crusaders Morning Worship Service. We're so happy that you decided to stop a while and worship the Lord right along with us. We want to let you know that we still are on location at 4307 4th Avenue South here in Minneapolis. And we invite you to come on out and you can feel safe as you worship the Lord right along with us. If you prefer to still watch this on the three venues that we have available, you are more than welcome to join us. Pull us up on our website at www.evangelistcrusaders.com. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube at Evangelist Crusaders Church. Now we are so thankful for those of you who have been supporting us with your prayers and your financial giving all these many months. And we want to continue to ask you to do that if you certainly desire to do so. We invite you to go to our website and click on the Givelify link or you can just download the app to your phone. You'll find us under Evangelist Crusaders. Our address there is 4307 4th Avenue South. We've also been encouraged by the cards and letters that you have sent. It is a blessing to know that we are being a blessing to you. So if you prefer the written word, address all of your correspondence to Evangelist Crusaders Church, Post Office Box 7291, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The zip code is 55407. And now we're going to go directly into the word of God. I know that you're going to be blessed. Listen and enjoy. Pardon my cheat sheet. We want to welcome Reverend Eugene Royster, and of course his lovely wife, uh, for many, many years. Many, many years. Brother Eugene got saved in 1974. Nineteen sixty-three. Okay, rededicated himself in nineteen seventy-four. Came to Advanced Crusaders. Okay, very nice. And it was licensed in nineteen seventy-five. I remember because that I had been there. Thank you. I had been there. I had been at Advanced Crusaders for one week in the tent revival meeting, and my last service there with the tent meeting, Brother Eugene, I think it was Brother Mickey and Sister Rayola, all came forward and got licensed in the ministry. And Brother Eugene, the Reverend, I'll call him Brother Gene. He prefers that. Headed our door to door canvassing efforts in St. Paul for many, many, many years, knocking all the doors all throughout St. Paul. Uh, he's also a lead singer in the choir, and he sang many of the songs on our EC albums. He's a gifted musician, played drums for many years in the Advanced Crusaders, bass guitar, and something else. You, 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 there we go. He always was Bishop Blaydark Hill's right hand man whenever she had the prayer line. She loved Brother Eugene because she didn't have to say anything to him, she would look at him. And he would know what to do. Go get so and so. Go get so and so. And it's good to have a ministry partner that can work with you like that. <laughs> he's a man of faith and of the Word of God. Uh, he's known for his success in helping people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He oversaw our youth radio broadcast for many, many years. Him and his wife, they were the hosts of the youth broadcast. Those of us who were just learning how to preach, we'd have a chance to be able to be there. And he was always encouraging us there. And then being led of the Lord to begin his own ministry, uh, which is, he's a co-founder of Word of Faith Christian Center, and that's in Minneapolis. He's been their senior pastor for the past 30 plus years. And they serve the inner city and surrounding communities. He noted that his favorite scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So let's give our best attention and welcome to Reverend Eugene as he comes and ministers to us the word of God in the power of the spirit. Amen. Let's stand and receive our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you. You can be seated. I didn't need all of that. I just like to, uh, you know, Brother Gene can go from there. Uh, the Lord uh, had laid a, a particular portion of scripture on my heart uh, for today, even prior to they giving me the theme of repentance. One of the things that I think that is most, most, uh, uh, let me put it like this. I think one of the things that's necessary for the people of God to understand is why you repent. Well, what is that all about? Because generally, when you think about repentance, you think about some sin or something that you've done or you've not done or 
something that you haven't forgiven yourself for. But I believe the Bible gives you a stepping stone to what it should be about. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the, uh, to the book of Mark, fourth chapter. Real simple scripture. I'm not going to preach something to you that you haven't heard. So, you know, if you're expecting something that was overly deep or something like that, maybe this will be enough for you to be deep. It talks about the sower. And everybody feels like I really know this portion of scripture about the sower and what it's all about and how the seed was given and, and so on and so forth and, and how it affected me. Let me read it to you for just a moment. The sower, this is the fourth chapter of the book of St. Mark. You can also find it in the book of Matthew. It said the sower, verse number 14, the sower soweth the word. And these are they that by the, way, by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, I should have started verse number, number three to give it to you, but I'm, I'm feeling that you already know that part. I'll read it for you anyway. Verse number three. Verse number four, chapter four, stay there. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up, and choked it, in, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up, and increase and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. Now, most of us want to believe that we are in that category where we are the good seed or we're the good ground. And the Lord had to give some understanding to this portion of scripture to the disciples. He said it's given to you to understand what the meaning is, but obviously you don't get it. See, sometimes as a people of God, we overlook the obvious. The seed that the sower sent was the seed that the Lord wanted us to have. But it's just not one seed. It's just not one thing. See, we stop at forgiveness and we think, hey, the Lord forgave me. I'm good to go. I don't need anything else. But what about the other portions of the word of God that are sown in your heart? And see, this is what happens with the word of God. That sower, when they sowed the word, it went to the recipient's heart. I don't think the Lord makes mistakes when he sends the word to us with uh, noting any very various of things that we might run into. It is up to us as the people of God to receive that word. Now, the Bible will go on and say, and I'm going to read it for you because I don't want to paraphrase too much. I'm looking at the time. The sower soweth the word. This is verse number 14. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan come immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endureth but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of rich riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unprofitable. And these are they that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. All of us believe that we are in that last verse, number twenty, that we receive the word and we're bringing forth increase. The question remains is why some only bring forth 30, and why some bring forth 60, and then why some bring forth 100. Because, see, the word of God that's sown in your heart, the Lord knew immediately where to sow the word. You can't hide the word. The word have I hid in my heart, the Bible says, that I might not sin against you. But, see, every time the word is preached to you, you don't get it. You don't get it. I don't care who the preacher is, you don't get it. There are some times when the word is preached, oh yeah, you got that word and you're running with it and you're so happy with it 
and you fall into one of these categories. You don't believe it, but you do. Because, see, I can stand up here and preach about finances all day, about how the Lord will bless, how he will uh, multiply your needs. We talk about the offering, and some walk away with the same poverty that they had when they came in. Some can't believe that God will heal your body. You know, they don't believe it. That word can be preached. Didn't the Lord talk about healing? He bore those stripes that we might be healed. Some can't receive that word. You know, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. I got cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof. Some can't receive that because it falls on different ground. We don't understand oftentimes that our heart is in a different place oftentimes. And we beat ourselves up because of that, because of the lack of understanding of the word of God and how fertile or infertile your heart is at that particular time. That doesn't mean that you are a bad person. That doesn't mean that you walk around with sin in your life. It just means that you don't get it. Does that make any sense? When I first got saved, they used to talk about the Lord giving them stuff. The Lord gave us those drums. The Lord gave us that bass, you know. The Lord gave us these chairs. And I thought, what in the heck are they talking about? How could the Lord give you anything? I didn't understand. I came up with my own conclusion. Uh, maybe what they're saying is the Lord used somebody to give them these items or whatever these things are that they needed. I didn't understand. What did Paul say when I was a child? I thought I was a child. <laughs> then I put away foolish things. We don't get it. Nobody gets it all. Understand that. Because the Bible says we look through a glass darkly. We only see in part. We understand in part. You know, but when he that is perfect has come, guess what? Our eyes are going to be open. How many times have you prayed, I'll be glad when the Lord comes and lets me know about all of this stuff that's going on? Because you're in the word of God here. That's why we look at repentance, because there are many things that we don't get. And again, it's not that you're wrong about it. We just don't get it. But when we do get it, and we hear the word, and we understand the word, and it falls into that good ground, oh, you're running with it. There are some people that will believe God for things, and, and you'll go to them for prayer because you understand that they, they, they've caught it. They, they, they've grabbed on to the coattail of the Lord and they begin to receive the blessings of God. There are some people you'll believe, I'm going to call so-and-so because I know that they can get a prayer through for this. You don't believe me, do you? But it's true. Because you can't understand it all of the time. Again, that doesn't mean that you have done something wrong in your life. Is that the word hasn't tickled that part of your heart enough for you to grab hold of it. Oh yeah, we've had many services where we've got excited. Get excited about the word of God. You get excited about the songs uh, that people sing. Uphold me with your free spirit. But do we really believe that? You know? Have mercy upon me, God, but do we really uh, accept the mercies of God? They're from everlasting to everlasting. The word of God, which is here for us to understand, sometimes we just don't get it. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the Lord was talking to the people at that particular time who were the priests that were in charge. And he said, look at my people. They've got prosperity like you see today. They've got all this stuff coming in. People are testifying about what God gave them in a natural sense, but their spirit is not being fed. He said, I want you to do so. I want you to go marry this, this woman of whoredoms whose name is Gomer. Because I want you to show the people where they're messing up. It is up to you and I to share the word of God with one another as best as we can what we have received. Again, I'll say it. You don't get it all, and believe me, you don't know it all. In the book of 1 Corinthians, in the third chapter, verse number 11, because I'm sure that some are saying, I don't know if I can receive that. And that's fine. <laughs> that's fine 
Because there's a lot of things that we can't receive. Someone talked about Jonah and uh, uh, him going to Nineveh and, and talking to the people there, and, uh, but they don't tell you the part about how sinful Jonah was. He said, no, I'm not going. The Lord spoke to him directly, which we hope God could do for us, and he said, shut your mouth. I'm not going there because all you're going to do is forgive him. That's all you're going to do. You're going to forgive him. The man jumped on a boat going the opposite direction. <laughs> Throw me overboard. I got to hide and play. Throw me overboard. That's what he said. Uh, you know, the, the tempest's up and, and uh, I, I, I throw me overboard and, and, and the peace will come. Because Jonah didn't understand. Moses didn't understand. Paul did not understand. The only one who had full recognition of what God was all about was Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he lives on the uh, inside of us and he's going to guide us through the spirit of God into all truth. But you've got to understand, where, where, where am I, what am I missing? Ask the question sometime. Why am I not being blessed? Is it my sin? Well, I haven't done anything. I'm on an island by myself. Did Paul go through all kind of stuff? Yes, he did. Where did he mess up? He didn't. Things, time, and chance happens to us all. 11th verse, chapter 3. Let's talk about the foundation of the Lord. And I'm, and I'm, I'm preaching about this in... in in with the uh, scripture that we just read in Mark about understanding about the foundation of the Lord. Again, this is why you can come to the Lord and ask the Lord for forgiveness and ask for repentance because somewhere you miss it. Again, that doesn't mean you're the worst person in the world. It just means that something was not understood. Every single word of the Lord, as a, according to that scripture, goes directly to your heart. So why don't we get it? Why don't we get it? When you look in the mirror and you say, why didn't I get that? Why not understand that? Why didn't I feel the spirit of God like that? You know, because there's other things that are going on. Other things that are happening in your life. Other things that are causing you to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute. Let me just, just let me step back and handle this for a moment. I'm going to tell you a story. I, I don't share it too often. When I was here at Evangelist Crusaders as a minister, the Lord had spoken to me and told me to leave. And um, I said to the Lord, uh, no, <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable. I, I don't want to do this right now. And the Lord kept troubling me over and over again about it, about uh, doing what he would have me to do. And um, I didn't understand. I hadn't received what the Lord wanted just yet. And I was walking in the rain, I remember, because the Lord had definitely been tormenting me about moving on to something else. Not that I said something better, nothing that was the next step, uh, the next level, whatever you call it. It wasn't anything like that. He just had a different group of people that he wanted me to minister to. Do we preach the same word? Yes, we do. I don't care what version of the Bible it is, it all comes out the same way. But I was talking to the Lord, and he said, he said I was walking in the rain, and I was just uh, praying to the Lord, you know, Lord, I just don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this. I just don't want to leave. And then I came up with this to say to the Lord. I said, I don't want to leave because I don't want to leave the people. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, they're not your people. They're mine. I didn't understand. But when he told me that, <laughs> all of a sudden it fell on good ground. <laughs> you know, my eyes were open to receive with the Lord, and I moved on to do what God would have me to do. That happens in every phase of your life. You want to be a good wife. You want to be a good husband. You want to be a good child. You want to be a good student. You want to be good at whatever you do. It's got to come to a place where you understand it and you receive it. Until then... You're just going to be going through the motion, having that form of God in 2 Timothy 3, 5, but denying the power there. The Bible says turn away from it, but yet we don't. We get religion, and we start going through all the different things 
over and over and over again because of what we think we should do instead of knowing what we should do by the word of God. Talking about repentance, why? What do I got to do? And then why doesn't it last? Talk about revival, why doesn't it last? Because, see, we're growing, the Bible says, from faith to faith. Sometimes I have to say to the Lord, wait a minute. <laughs> You're going to have to help me with this one because I just don't get it. You hear what I'm saying? There's no shame in that. There's no harm in that. I just don't get it. I got shot a couple of years ago. Didn't do anything to provoke anyone other than I was into, into I didn't weave, dodge, you know, what they call Bob and weave enough to, to dodge the bullet. <laughs> I didn't understand, but what rose out of that was some things that were in my heart that I thought were long past. There was such violence that rose up in me that, that were from the days of old that just shook me. Just shook me. No, I hadn't done anything wrong. But there were some things in my heart, oh my God, I would be ashamed to even say. And then the enemy, <coughs> is this water for me? And then the enemy came to me and sent people to me. Because whether you know it or not, you got people in your church right here don't mind going to jail. You got people in your church don't mind cussing somebody out. Say amen. Because that person might be you. I got ex-gang members in my church that called me up and said, what do you want us to do? And all of that in my heart had to come to a point where the Lord had to put it in some good ground. Where I began to understand, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. It had to come, I had to repent. Because of what was in my heart that I thought was already gone. I was long past. I had put my guns away. You know, I had really put them away. Oh, Brother Jane, you used to care. Yes, I did. I came to school. I came to Minnesota with guns. Just because. When I got saved, I still had guns. But they talked me into throwing them away. I should have kept them. <laughs> should have kept them, but, but the guns are gone. But, uh, you know, they might be coming back. Amen. Let me go ahead and finish this up real quick. I'm talking about you understanding the word of God and understanding that you're not going to get it all. That's the biggest mistake that we made when we first got saved. We thought we knew it all. Everything. You know, we thought we knew everything about salvation, about God, about the Holy Ghost, about everything, and we knew nothing. I remember Sister Banks I'll say Sister Banks so I can be safe. I don't want to, you know, insult anybody. Sister Banks was at 1701 in the old church. Old building up. It used to be a house of irrepute, they used to say. And she was, she was standing in the back and uh, standing in a little corner that she and Mother McGee and all of them used to stand in, you know. Here she, she's with all of the older women of the church, and she, she had to be like 30, something like that. I think she, she, if she was that old. Well, she looked like she was a teenager, and they had a, they had some kind of altar call or something like that. And she was she was telling me, "God up there," I said, "What this young girl doing telling me what to do?" You know, I didn't know she had kids kids my age in the in the church. I didn't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? I may use a little humor, but you don't know it. Here's what we're going to say in the book of First uh, Corinthians here, chapter three, verse number eleven. It's talking about the foundation. When you're going to work on the foundation of God. You got to know what you're putting on it. Hold on just a second. I got something else I want to give you. Before I read here. The Lord gave me an equation to give to evangelist crusaders. All right? The equation is A plus B equals C. All right? That's one of the foundations of basic math. A plus B equals C. A is for attitude. B is for behavior. 
and C is your character. Your attitude plus your behavior will equal your character. If you take any way, shape, or form that equation and change it, let's say you want to remove attitude, your behavior will be reflective of your character minus your attitude. If you take away your behavior, your attitude will be reflected of your character minus your attitude. If you take away character, you come up with zero. Nothing. Something you can use, something you can think about. Now I'm going to read this here because I'm running behind time. Talking about the foundation. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Why? Again, because you don't get it all. And because of the ABCs, you're going to build differently upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13 says, Every man's work will be, will, shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I got some stubble in my foundation. I got some hay in my foundation. My, my, my foundation ain't all gold and silver. Remember, I just said some things that were in my heart were not according to God's plan. He had to change a few things in me, even after so many different years. So I got some stubble. I got some hay. I got some precious stones in there, too. And some of them are sitting in here. They're precious stones. Amen. And it shall, it, they shall be revealed by fire. This is verse number 13. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it, sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. After all you've gone through, after all you've done in this world, after all the mistakes you make, and you will make some, and you will make more. If not, if not, if, if, if the Bible says, if I don't offend you in some way, shape, or other, I'm a perfect man, you know, in my tongue. You know, I might say something to you that might not quite sit quite well with you because you might be in one of those attitudes that day. You might be going through something that day. I might happen to say something, and then you're offended. But the Bible says if I can control it, if I can be aware, if I can work on the things that, are, that the Lord has established in the word for me, guess what? I can be that perfect man. My faith can be made whole. My prayers can be heard by the Lord and shall be received. But I got to first understand, when Pastor Dave gets up here and he starts preaching to you about something, uh, what are you thinking about? You know, is a word doing anything well, well? Or do you analyze what that word is? You know, Brother Larry, Pastor Larry was talking about faith today. What, what is your faith? You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It all rolls into one gigantic ball of salvation because the Lord meant it that way for us to be saved and for us to enjoy this salvation. That's why I walk around happy all the time. I'm not mad at nobody. And if I was mad, big deal. What does it matter? I've had so many people come to me over the years saying, uh, I thought you were mad at me. I, I, or, here's the other one, I was so mad at you all this time. And I said, I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't know you were mad. So what is the big deal? You know? That's kind of like my wife being mad at me, and, and you know how they shut down. Dave, if you have an experience, you'll get it. You know, you know, they just shut down on you. What's the matter? Nothing. <laughs> well, you know, you're acting a little bit, you a little bit funny here, you know, because you, sh you should know by now what I am saying. You should just know. Hey, you know what? I'm going through the steps here. The word didn't fall in my good heart here that particular time. I got to work on it a little bit to make sure it brings forth some fruit. You know? Don't beat yourself up. Don't put yourself down. Understand that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you. 
For God so loved the world, the Bible says in St. John 3, 16, that what did he do? He gave. Verse number 17 says this, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. God is not willing that any should be lost. I don't want to waste time on trying to make sure that everybody in the world that's already saved gets saved again. We disagree. And because we disagree doesn't mean that you're less saved or, or, or more saved than me. We just disagree. We don't understand some of the scriptures. Jesus wept. What does that mean? To me, it meant it's time to eat because that's all we said at dinner time. What's your scripture? Everybody says scripture. Jesus whip. Jesus whip. Everybody said Jesus whip. But what did it mean? Didn't know. We don't know one another as well as we should because we're afraid. The Bible says let yourself be vulnerable one to another. But we're afraid to do that because if we do, oh my God, uh, somebody might find out who I really am. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. Pastor Dave and I, when we would go on these men's fellowships, you know, we go on men's fellowship to get saved or whatever the case might be. I'm not trying to be little, but some of it was pretty much a waste of time uh, in my words. You know, waste of time. Because we come back and we do the same thing over and over again because we just didn't understand what we were supposed to get. Because seeing by someone, uh, we weren't told what we were supposed to get out of it. Brother Dave and I would be uh, roommates. But one thing about, about Pastor Dave that was always remarkable, he would keep you up all night long. <laughs> I mean, all night long. You know, we, we, you know we're going to pray before we go to bed or whatever, you know. Or whatever, you know, we go through these ritualistic things, you know, in these retreats, you know. We're going to pray and we're going to do all this kind of stuff. And we go to bed and uh, here's Pastor Dave. He's on the other side of me and he's got questions as if I got the answers. <laughs> and he asked me questions all night long, and then we talk about the question that he asked that he already had the answer for. But he would keep me up because we were talking and we were fellowshipping <laughs> one with another. You see, when we're brothers in the Lord, we, we fellowship. When we, we become... Uh, different because of the ministry, then it's all about ministering. Don't get me wrong, ministering is good. But see, I could have said it like this. I would minister to Brother David, Pastor Dave all night. No, it wasn't about no, no ministry. It was about fellowshipping, getting to know one another, getting to the place where you were confident that if I said anything, you didn't put me in hell. G-E-A-G-double-N-A, -E you Mr. Lake. Brother Dave uh, wrote that song. That burns with fire, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Eternal fire, eternal burning. Burning for eternity. Then he said this. Down, 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 down into the lake. <laughs> because that's what we were taught to believe all the time, that we were either going to heaven or we were going to go to hell. There was no in-between. There was no room for understanding. There was no room for grasping the truths that the Lord has in the Word of God. And he wrote that song, rock and roll song. It was just, it was really fun. That's why I remember G-E-H-E-N-A, Gehenna. You know, you're Mr. Lake. That burns with fire, weeping and burning. You know, that's what we, that's what we uh, thought about our walk with God. When the Lord never intended any of you to spend eternity in a lake that burns with fire. Amen. He never intended for you to be a separation from him. The Lord always wanted you to be with him. So if you are overtaken in a fault, Galatians 6 chapter, the Bible says ye which are spiritual, don't go to that old crazy stuff where it says, uh, Pastor Larry, uh, you need to pray for Brother Gene. Well, what happened? What did we do? Don't worry about it. <laughs> just pray. <laughs> just, just pray. You know? No, no. 
ye which are spiritual, the Bible says, restore me. You can't take this position that God has for me from me. I'm pastor to the grave. No matter what happens to the grave. And you are ministers in Christ to the grave. You are children of God to the grave. We're learning as we go. So just learn as you go, amen? amen. I'm sorry I'm going to have to, to leave. I'm going to have to turn it over to, to uh, Pastor Dave. Uh, I wish I could spend more time with you. Uh, maybe the next time I come out, I'll, I'll be able to have the entire service to myself. <laughs> I'll sing to you. I'll play the bass for you. I'll do all these different things. And just enjoy your fellowship. But uh, take a look at those two portions of scripture. Apply them to your life. The joy that the Lord gives us, the world can't take it away. Just use that. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. I'm turning back in hands of Pastor Larry. Uh, thank you again for the invitation. Uh, Pastor Dave has invited me several times. I just... It just didn't fit the schedule, but I'm so glad that he didn't give up. And I'm so glad that you brothers didn't give up either, and you kept uh, beckoning me to come. God bless you. In fact, you know, let us stand. I'll do this. This is a Sunday of repentance. And there are things, just like I said, you don't know. And if you're honest with yourself, you'll say, I just didn't know that. Nobody explained that to me because we're so busy in ministry that we don't have time to fellowship with one another and teach each other about the ways of God, the ways of the Lord, the way of Jesus Christ who will pick us up. You're struggling with things like that. Every head bowed. I want you to ask the Lord to just forgive you. I want you to make it a, a, a point in your mind to say, Lord, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. Help me to understand your ways. Help me to understand the ways of salvation. Help me to understand the joy that you put on the inside of me and, with, and uphold me with your free spirit. That's what the Lord is all about. Take a moment to reflect. Think about that. I didn't say put yourself down. I didn't say put yourself in the hell. I didn't say scare yourself in that direction. I just said receive the goodness of the Lord because that's what he has for all of us. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Larry.